Good afternoon. I will talk to you a little bit about the statistical learning strategy for playlet deposition. But first, I want you to explain some things about thrombus formation. The abnormal thrombus formation is an extremely biological, complicated biological process, and it's the main cause for ischemic attack and heart attack, which are the leading causes of mortality worldwide. So, in order to prevent these diseases, there's a necessity for uh, a multi-scale model that can integrate the different processes involved. And this model has to be able to make predictions. Our approach to this complex problem is to study the platelet deposition. And we had available some experimental data with the following setup. So the experiments were performed on pigs. We had an external blood vessel where we can make uh, several physiochemical measurements. The most important is the platelet deposition. That is the variable we want to predict. Also, there were other variables like the presence of heparin or normal blood, the platelet concentration, the level of hematocrite, the time of perfusion, and the stenosis. So, we face different model strategies. One could be what we, we called a physical model, that are models based on theory, based on physical principles. The advantage is that they underlie the mechanism in play of what you are observing. Another different model that you can use is machine, a machine learning method. These machine learning methods are black boxes where they, you give inputs, a set of inputs to, it, to this method, and it provides you an output, which is usually the prediction. My message for this talk is that a machine learning method can be as good predictor as a physical model. And I will show you how to predict uh, with random forest the platelet deposition. What is random forest? It's a machine learning method developed by uh, Leo Brimman and Al Kurler use it for prediction. And when we want to predict uh, a quantitative variable, we call uh, that we are doing regression. It is based on decision trees, and we use uh, a lot of decision trees. That's why we call it forest. And these decision trees are built from random subsets of our data. That's uh, why it's called random forest. But the main concept is that we use a series of inputs to build our model, the, the variables of our model. We train the random forest, and it gives us an output, which is the prediction. OK, we have the model. Now we need a, a strategy to test and validate how good is this model for predictions. And the good strategy, you, we can use the same data we use for building the model for, for testing the prediction. We have to use new data because we want to test new experiments. With, so uh, what we do is the cross-validation strategy. We had two data sets. The first is called train set. It's the, the data set that we train the random forest. In our case, it were three peaks. Then the remaining one we use to test the, predictor, the prediction error of our model, and we call test set. So to summarize what we do, we had a set of variables, heparin, the platelet concentration, the tissue substrate, the hematocrite, the time, and the stenosis. And we use this to train with a data set the random forest. And then, using only the input variables, we will predict the level of platelet deposition. And these are the results. I don't have time to, to explain the other model, but it's a the red bars come from a physical theory-based model. And you see that in blue, the random forest can give more or less a, a competitive error rate of prediction. So that was the message I wanted to give you. Thank you very much.